Good morning. So we, we were told that this church did not miss a Sunday to pray for us. And we're so touched by that. We're just so, so grateful. Um, you didn't know us and you had other things to pray for, but you kept on and on. And um, we just really want to thank you. We love seeing people in person and saying thank you. Um, so you did more than get Andrew out of prison and maybe you can tell a little bit about that. And uh, Noreen was the only Christian I had contact with for two years. Uh, I was in cells with, all my cellmates were, were Muslims and actually very devoted Muslims. And I, I missed very much having, I wish so many times that I had a, a, another Christian with me who could encourage me, pray with me, uh, correct me when I was thinking very wrong thoughts. And uh, I did not have that. When Noreen was allowed to visit me, we were speaking through uh, reinforced glass and bars and on a, on a phone system. And I would ask her, are people praying for me? I just had this, this uh, uh, desperate need to, to be connected to other, to other believers and to know that I hadn't been forgotten, that there were people praying for me. And even though I was alone in those cells, that I wasn't alone in a spiritual sense, that there were others who were standing with me. And every week, Noreen said, uh, yes, there are people praying for you. And in fact, I think it's growing. There are more and more people praying. And actually, there, there was something supernatural that God was doing with, with a prayer movement. A couple of church historians have told me that uh, this was an unprecedented prayer movement focused on one person. There hasn't been a prayer movement like this in living memory. And it went all, over, all around the world. There were millions and millions of people who ended up praying for me in many different countries. And as we saw this happening, this growing, uh, and we see it more clearly now that we're out. We can look back. Uh, we see that God, God initiated this prayer movement. He sustained it and he drove it. And it was not just, God doesn't need millions of people praying to get one person out of prison. He can do it with less people. I don't know how many, but, <laughs> uh, but he certainly didn't need this many. And those prayers did sustain me and, and I did ride a wave of prayer out of Turkey. But you will see someday that you were involved in something much bigger that God was doing uh, than, than just sustaining and getting me out of prison. He was raising up these millions of people around the world deliberately. He was, he was doing this to pour this. I became a lightning rod. I'm drawing that prayer in. You're praying for me, and that prayer is blessing me, but I'm a lightning rod, and that is then just being diffused into, into Turkey. And the reason for this is that God is preparing to move powerfully in that land, uh, I think there will be, I believe that in my lifetime I'll see millions of Turks come to Jesus, that we will see this with our own eyes. And an important part of that was all of that prayer that would go in and prepare spiritually for a harvest there. So I think you'll see someday that you were part of something very significant. So I thank you personally for, for praying for me. Uh, this has to be God, right? Because for you know people who prayed for me, I was surprised that people prayed for so long. Because there's so many other crises that come up, but people continue to pray for me. And some people prayed very intensely. A number of people have told me that they would wake up in the middle of the night and, and pray or at different times. And, and I, I just, I'm astounded by, uh, by that. I just see you were responding to God and doing this and being sensitive to what he was leading. And I thank you for that. And also because we invested 25 years in Turkey, um, I thank you for the prayers that poured in there because you're going to see a harvest come from that. Yeah, and this harvest idea isn't our idea. Actually, the Lord spoke to us about that in 2009, and from that time we started to make preparations. When the arrest came, we thought, Lord, how can we be deported? We have to be here preparing for the harvest. And then, as Andrew said, the, the prayer started and grew and grew and grew, and we saw that just by him being in prison, prayer was actually pouring into that nation. So you have a big investment in the harvest that will come. And is it, is, your name is? Zenia. Yeah, Zenia. Yeah. yeah. And you have a year there too. So, I mean, this church has like extra investment in Turkey. So just keep an eye on Turkey. And when it comes to mind, please pray for the church there. They're about to go into some really difficult times and they will need to stand. So thank you so much.